So good morning, everybody. Man, I had a really wild night, just crazy ass dreams. So I couldn't even begin to tell you what they mean or why. So whatever. I'll just chalk them up as something to remember in case anything happens out there in the future. But I wanted to cover the whole thing with high blood pressure, low blood pressure, angiostatin, fatty acid imbalances, imbalances just in general, and then how the salt and the J-juice and all of that are going to come into play as far as regulating your body. So I was working on standard deviation the other day, and you got to know how to understand standard deviation. That's when you have um, a certain, uh, I guess, percentage of the population that's going to be within one de standard deviation away from the mean or two standard deviations away from the mean or three standard deviations away from the mean. And the rule of thumb, I guess, in this is that 68% of the population is going to be within one standard deviation from the mean which then is going to dictate how in which they position the information in the industry text, such as um, National Institute of Health and PubMed and uh, mainstream articles that are trying to get information across. If they feel that 68% of the population is enough for them to universally say that everybody has to do this, this, and this, that's how they're going to assume and write, well, not so that's how they're going to write tips and, and, and um, they're going to advise people on specific diets. Okay. They don't talk about the 38%. Okay. 68. Yeah. They don't talk about the 38% that is not affected. They just focus on the 68% that's affected. So why am I saying this? Because when it comes to standard deviation, and they figured out that the average population, 60% is um, dealing with cardiovascular disease, and then you see them progressively when people take on a lifestyle and imbalances, they may take on cardiovascular disease somewhere in their future. So they may not, they may not have a predisposition, but they're going to assume, given the history that most people are going to take on some kind of imbalances in their fatty acids, that will contribute to cardiovascular disease. So then they create industry texts that will assume that everybody has cardiovascular disease even when they don't. And that's what I'm dealing with right now. And that's what I've been dealing with the last couple years is that people are assuming that everybody has some kind of cardiovascular issue that will then result in a specific symptom, which we have already characterized and know that symptoms are the body way of compensating or overcompensating or trying to heal from anomalies in the body okay but one of the biggest things that people like to focus on is salt and the high blood pressure so we have to understand what high blood pressure is and what contributes to high blood pressure and then what hormones are having to do with high blood pressure because we can't just blame salt because we need salt in our diet we need sodium we need electrolytes we need a certain amount of fat. We need a certain amount of all these different minerals that have been progressively being demonized in our society. And people are just, you know, creating all this fear, you know, for no reason, but they're working from these imbalances. Okay. So when I was reading all these different industry, te industry texts and I'm doing the Google search and I'm speaking into talk to text, you know, blood pressure and fatty acids and blood pressure, salt and fatty acids, and I'm getting all this information. And then I'm, then it goes down deeper into the rabbit hole as far as what are the mechanisms of high blood pressure. So let me tell you my thought process so you know how I get to these conclusions. So you know I'm not just taking this information from somewhere else and regurgitating. I'm taking information that are that have been substantiated in different contexts. And then you can see based upon now with the Jilly Juice, where we fit within the context of industry information that assumes everybody has cardiovascular disease and high blood pressure, okay? So I did a Google, does, does how does fat create high blood pressure? I asked, I asked the question to Google, which all of you can do. How does this, this, this affect this, this, and this? And so what came up was like the Harsh Field, 
The researchers say that stress increases angiotensin to levels and therefore blood pressure. Furthermore, in obese individuals or skinny fat individuals, um, produce fat, produce leptin and angiotensinogen keeps the blood pressure up by interfering with the natural process of sodium excretion that should occur when the stress is gone. So actually sodium lowers the blood pressure, but it's also an energizing force that when the body has too much fat in the blood, it then triggers the angiotensin II, which raises the blood pressure because it has, you have to, what do you call it? You have to, the body still has to function. It still has to compensate. You still need an energizing force. You still need electrolytes to keep all of your systems functioning properly. But when you have cardiovascular issues or high fatty deposits based upon imbalances and you're not releasing any excess, then yes, you're going to be then triggering certain hormones to come up and that's when you see symptoms, okay? So um, because then also too, the body also holds on to minerals because of the imbalances. And so that's why you hear about sodium being um, accumulated in the kidneys and then it gets released periodically to keep the blood volume flowing on a consistent level, okay? So if you are missing sodium and the right minerals and you also have major malabsorption where all of those minerals are being released more than it's being absorbed, then this is why people die from um, heart failure because there's not enough minerals in the blood to keep it going. And so this is why everybody dies is from very, very low blood pressure due to major malabsorption rates or very, very high blood pressure due to imbalances in the system to where you're not releasing the excess fat and the excess minerals. And then it's causing then uh, uh, more of an energy taxing your heart where the heart just gives out because there's no more energy left um, or the heart just shuts down. Okay. Or it, it or, or, or there's a blood clot, you know, there's so much fat in there and the blood's not getting to the right areas. And then you have a clot or aneurysm or stroke or a heart attack and you don't survive it. So the fact that someone survives a heart attack and a stroke and hypertrophic myopathy, which is which is the, the, the muscles of the heart are so enlarged that it cuts off the blood supply. But the fact that people survive these says they have enough minerals, but you're not gonna be so much, you're not gonna be luckier the next time. And that's why they say 95% of the people actually die from a heart attack because most likely it's their second time around. They never listen to the first time around. So they kept with their same lifestyle, same belief system. And the first time they had a heart attack or stroke or an aneurysm, they kind of modified their lifestyle and they kind of sort of did some changes, but it wasn't enough to make an actual difference the next time around because they still have the same issue. They haven't fixed it at the root cause. They just put band-aids and medications and everything else, but you still have the same issue. So that's why 95% of people out there who suffered a heart attack to begin with will not survive the second one, okay? So then I looked up angiotensin. Angiotensin is a peptide hormone, okay, that causes vasoconstriction and an increase in blood pressure. It is part of the renin angiotensin system, which regulates blood pressure. Angiotensin also stimulates the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex to promote sodium retention by the kidneys. Okay, so when you're triggering that kind of hormone, which is a death trajectory hormone, okay, so some of you can trigger death trajectory hormones, some of you will trigger life trajectory hormones. What are the life trajectory hormones? It's the prostaglandin hormone, the pain hormone. So when you're triggering the death hormone, which basically paves the way for death, the angiotensin, based upon your accumulation of fatty acids, then it's going to uh, promote sodium retention in the kidneys of then, which is, which then, which then, you know, then, then that's how the body is able to put something on reserve to keep the blood going. There is, they do enough release to keep the blood flow moving. So that way you don't die. Okay. So then, so then I wrote about that. I said, high blood pressure has to do with fatty acid deposits in your arteries and capillaries 
triggering, <laughs> triggering. Um, I swear I hate when I do this talk to text. It makes me sound like a total idiot. Triggering angiotensin and nothing else. So when the body, hold on, oh my God, okay. So when the body tries to heal itself or when it overcompensates or compensates, it will increase the blood pressure rate so you don't die regardless of your fatty deposits. However, at some point you're going to overtax your system and the strain will be too much due to obesity. And this is when a person suffers heart attack or stroke. And it's not even just an obese person, like an actual physically like large person. It could be a skinny fat person. Okay. But then you're like, oh, well, I don't, you know, uh, have a lot of fat and I work out. Well, you also could be, um, creating such muscle in your heart because you're working out so much. And I know some people do that to where then the muscle walls of your heart become so enlarged that it cuts off the supply. So even those that do all this exercise to stop the fatty acid deposits from accumulating will also do themselves in at some point. So sodium actually lowers the blood pressure once the body itself actually heals. So here's the thing. When somebody does uh, do a lot of exercise and they call it hyper, hypertrophy, hypertrophy, or there's a hypertrophic myopathy, which is when somebody dies from the enlargement of the muscles in the heart that cuts off the blood supply, okay? That is how an, a person would die that's in the uh, exercise world when they're trying to stay away from fat and sodium and they're exercising like as if their life depended on it. So sodium will energize a body to what it needs to do to get blood pumping or the immune system activated, um, activate ourselves, healed with resources already in the body or activating the food supply you are currently eating. So, but here's the thing, it's more than just sodium, okay? Because you could be activating and you could be energizing a system that is depleted in its resources, okay? And so what it'll do is no different than getting on the treadmill or going to a gym and you don't have enough resources or getting in a car that has a gas leak and just being a lead foot. Okay. So this is why people say, well, stay away from exercise when you have issues. Okay. Um, when you have like heart issues, they don't want you to overtax your heart or, or, uh, stay away from salt because it's energizing a body that already has issues. Okay, which means that, you know, when you, when you lower your blood pressure, when you have, when you have high fat, fatty deposits, um, it lowers your blood pressure. So it's not plumping as much and really putting miles on your body, so to speak. But then you risk the other side of it to where you have too much of a low blood pressure that also will then cause hypertrophic type of hypertension and heart attacks too. See, there is two sides to these equations, too little blood pressure, too much blood pressure. And that's why balance is so important to understand in the J-Juice world. Okay. So, um, so then I'm reading this journal and I'm understanding, like I said before earlier, that the industries will work and talk from a majority, which is like 60% or 68% of the population is suffering from heart disease currently, but they don't really acknowledge the 38% who's not. So when you have 38% who has very low blood pressure, and then you're saying you should only have this many tablespoons or teaspoons of salt per week or per day, you could actually be contributing to someone who already has low blood pressure to have even more low blood pressure because they're not taking in the necessary minerals to keep their blood pressure regulated and they already still have imbalances. So then when you're putting out there in industry text that 68% have cardiovascular issues and you're completely denying people or saying they shouldn't have this much salt, then 38% of the population is going to die from heart attacks regardless. So that's why, you know, reading these industry texts, you have to understand where they're getting the information from and who and how they get it. And it comes from the standard deviation models. Okay. Okay. So they're not saying that because they don't know to what extent they don't know people's biochemistry, but they know a percentage that 68%, which is one deviation away from the average. So the average is right there in the middle, right there in the middle. So there's, there's a certain, you know, a percentage. I don't know what that percentage is that has cardiovascular issues and they're working within that 68%. Okay. And then there's, um, 
and then there's yeah and so they're not take into account the 38 percent that don't have those issues that their advice is actually going to cause then the um the extreme to the other side of very very low which is what i had to deal with was very low blood pressure but even though i had really low blood pressure i was still eating high high fat and high sodium types of stuff i mean i was drinking starbucks every day eating the tv dinners going to fast food high sodium high fat but um but my imbalances then started having me accumulate the fat and the water retention and all of that and then it caused other issues like pmdd okay so it's like a chain reaction of stuff anyways because i had imbalances so then i put under this one excessively low salt diet damages the heart through okay so there's a mistake in this journal that doesn't talk about the state of the body Okay, so they don't say, well, people who uh, have cardiovascular issues should not do this or do that. So they started out, so this is what I'm saying, like when, when they assume everybody has cardiovascular issues. I'm going to read the first few sentences so you get it. Um, a salt objective, a high salt intake causes hypertension and leads to cardiovascular disease. Well, that's a statement that assumes everybody that takes high salt will have cardiovascular disease, and that's not true. But they're working from that 68%, that's one standard deviation away from the mean, away from the average, and that's what they're working within, okay? So whenever you read industry texts that make a universal uh, type of statement where everybody is, they're assuming that 68% covers everybody, because at some point, yes, your imbalances, given the history that people are living and dying, and everyone dies from some kind of heart attack or a stroke, that's how they are going to cover their ass in a lot of ways. So I put, there's a mistake in this journal that doesn't talk about the state of the body. You can have high salt intake with low fat distribution or balanced fat distribution, and you wouldn't have cardiovascular disease or hypertension. So it's almost like I have to correct them because you know the assumption is everybody has the potential for cardiovascular disease with high salt diet when that is not the correct assumption. So imbalances in your fatty acids, amino acids, pro-hormones, and minerals causes then the fatty deposits to accumulate today and trigger angiotensin hormones, which will manifest in a symptom, which is the body's alternative ways to keep you alive until there's no more minerals and nutrients to keep you alive, or the muscle gives out, or so much bad has collected that the blood can't get through. Or you, you, you've enlarged your heart muscle to such an extent that it cuts off the blood supply. And that is called hypertrophic myopathy or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, okay? So then, then I did a Google search on interactions, what did I say, between sodium intake, angiotensin 2, and blood pressure. So a low sodium chloride intake, NaCl, which is the chemi chemistry term for it or the, the little letters, Intake reduces the hypertrophy caused by angiotensin II. So a low NACL intake reduces the hypertrophy caused by angiotensin II, whereas a high NACL intake appears to augment the hypertrophy response with little effect on the BP. So a low sodium chloride intake reduces the hypertrophy caused by angiotensin. Okay, that's if you have already imbalances. Whereas a high NACL sodium intake appears to augment the hypertrophy response with little effect on the blood pressure. So it, it appears to augment the hypertrophy, which is the enlarging of the heart, but it has little effect on the blood pressure. So hypertrophy refers to an increased muscular size achieved through exercise. When you work out, if you want to tone or improve muscles, definition, lifting weights is the most common way to increase your hypertrophy, hypertrophy, whatever, however you call it. So, so like anything, you know, when, when you have imbalances in your body and the body has to work harder because of your imbalances, you're going to enlarge in your heart. You're going to overtax and put miles on your heart, miles on your system because you have imbalances. The salt is just doing what it's supposed to do. And it's there when somebody has imbalances. It gets accumulated in your fatty acid or in your fatty acids, but it also gets accumulated in your kidneys and that gets released systematically to keep the, the system regulated relatively based upon the state of the body, okay? And so, um, 
So, and then this guy was his name, Jeff Van Zandt said, Jill, I read that when humans add 10 pounds of fat off the body, it has to create seven miles of tiny capillaries to feed that fat. That's just an extra 10. Imagine the people who are 100, 200 pounds overweight. Have you any input as to how hard the taxes are, how hard that taxes are hard as well? Yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, here's the thing. You could be a skinny fat and you could be a fat fat. Okay, so it's not even have to do with weight. It could be do with just the, the 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 imbalances in the body, because I know skinny people who are very malnourished who do have fatty deposits around their organs, and that's when people suffer from heart attacks that you thought was healthy. You're like, oh god, this guy was healthy. He looked relatively healthy, but you don't know the state of the body. You have no idea the state of their fatty deposits their imbalances and so yeah recommending any kind of remedy to your friends is completely inappropriate so um so then i put find a link between fat and high blood pressure when you have a high volume of obesity and overweight obviously you're not treating all the excess out of the system so you are now over accumulating this is what the whole thing with the j juice is that we are inducing autophagy so you're going to be excreting the excess fatty acids and the excess salt in the body so the body can regulate correctly and you're excreting the excess amino acids fatty acids pro hormones and minerals and then the body is going to absorb what it needs and then release the excess and then you start seeing your blood pressure your arrhythmia all of your organs finally work at its optimal way okay and so the reason why we have symptoms is because a body is dealing and overcompensating the disturbances in your 11 different systems. And you're coming into this world already at a deficit. And then the body has to then figure out alternative ways to keep you alive. Because remember, life is desperate to live until there's nothing left. Okay. So then I said, when you have high volume of obesity and overweight, obviously you're not excreting all the excess out of your system. So you're now over accumulating Autophagy has not been triggered, and this is why people hold on to fat and sodium within their fat, which then triggers angiotestines. Jesus. I have to, uh, the stupid talk to text, angiotestines, angiotensins, which elevates blood pressure because the sodium is being stored in the body to keep the volume of blood pumped throughout the body. Okay? So with the whole thing with the J juice, well, if a person's fat or obese and they're taking in the high volume of salt of the J juice, but it's not just salt of the J juice, okay? It's also the fatty, or what is it? It's also the lactic acid, the nutrition, and the electrolytes, which is inducing autophagy. So you can be taking in all the salt, fat in chips, and in the food supply, but you're not releasing the excess. With the J-juice, you're taking in an energizing force that actually induces releasing the excess. I mean, some people, if you want to talk about the uh, salt water flushes, okay, salt energizes the system to release the excess, but here's the thing with the salt water flushes, why they're not optimal if you have the option for J-juice. Because you're doing a salt water flush, you still have um, malabsorption, you still have leaky gut, okay and what you're doing is you're energizing the system to try to fix the weaknesses with the resources you already have in your body so in, in an essence yes you're taxing your body stealing resources out of your hair skin and nails because you're not really deriving enough absorption from the food supply and then you increase and accelerate the aging process just doing salt salt water flushes okay so that's why the whole thing with the J-juice is it has the salt, it has the micro and macronutrition, the pro-hormones, it has the acids, the, the probiotics, and you're taking in the minerals. And so the nutrition and the minerals and the probiotics, which repopulate the gut, will then heal the weaknesses, heal and seal your gut, so then you can start actually healing the weaknesses in the body, putting stuff on reserve, and then the body isn't stealing resources because you're giving it resources and it's holding on to the resources. That's why we're not like the soul people, the SOL, the saltwater flush people. Because there's more than just probiotics and nutrition in the J-juice. It is the, the salt, 
it is the you know the the minerals and it's more than just the salt you know in the j juice there's minerals there is probiotics there's a micro and macro nutrition it's a whole biochemical chemical synergistic process but the holistic world has learned how to compartmentalize everything and that's how they manage symptoms okay and so you have to understand that when somebody does experience high blood pressure prior to the protocol that's already a symptom of cardiovascular disease they already have a symptom of cardiovascular disease but salt doesn't contribute to it salt just energizes the state within the body keeping everything regulated in such a way and then at some point you will then regulate your blood pressure because you're going to heal the weaknesses in your cardiovascular system in your heart you're not going to experience arrhythmia anymore if you stay on the j juice but yes you will exp i mean like anything when you do the j juice every single weakness that you've ever experienced in your lifetime that you brought to the table or whatever you induced during your lifetime is going to come to the surface i never experienced high blood pressure on the j juice not at all i experienced a beating of the heart a lot of it when i was taking um supplements for my PMDD, I was getting elevated levels of sweating and blood pressure stuff that was going on. But doing the J juice, I never experienced any blood pressure issues because that was never my, that was never a uh, a weakness or predisposition that I brought to the table. Okay, so if anything, it gave my body what it needed because I had such low blood pressure. So that's what is wrong with the industry is they're not talking to the thirty eight percent. They're speaking to the 68%, acting as if the 68% is representative of everybody, but statistically and percentage-wise, it's not true. If 100% of the people all had cardiovascular issues, then we would have to then, from the salt, then that's when the industry will say, okay, there's a universal poison out there that if you take it in this such amount, everybody will get heart disease. And that's when it becomes a, what do you call it? schedule one drug schedule two schedule three whatever okay but salt is not a drug but you have to figure out what your symptoms mean understand biochemistry and chemistry and there's just i mean so the industry kind of creates these issues of course because we're working from a standard deviation scale that assumes that everything they're saying is representative of everybody and it's not true they work within the first standard deviation, okay? And so they ignore 38% of the people that do not experience heart disease. And I'm one of the 38% that they ignore. So if I were to follow the industry text of very low salt diet, but then they, they see that people progressively become weaker and weaker and obese as they get older, and it's true, and it's true, okay? But when you do the JG's protocol and you don't spend any high blood pressure or any of that, then you wonder, well, what the hell? What the hell? But what the industry is looking at is a succession. Um, not everybody, though, when they get older, become more obese. But, but blood pressure does become something of an issue as you get older because you start, you're starting to see the degradation in your cardiovascular system. So ask you guys, I mean, it's like Massimo, you know, did you ever have high blood pressure at some point prior to the JG's protocol? You know, you being in your 70s. Okay, some people don't, some people do. I mean, I don't, I haven't taken enough data from all of the, the silent generation, you know, people that are in their 70s to figure out at the end of their life, what is their blood pressure like? But we know that everybody dies from heart failure, and stroke or a heart attack at the end of their life even though they've been diagnosed with cancer they don't die from cancer they die from heart failure or such low blood pressure that it's not pumping the blood to the proper places and they just die or they're not getting enough oxygen because of the respiratory issue and so no oxygen gets into the blood which then stops then the heart and the brain from going so so anyways and yes when somebody when uh when you have to wear a pacemaker or 
you're using a defibrillator. I mean, the sodium, the electrolytes in the blood, when you have enough, it acts like a defibrillator. And a pacemaker is like making up for the lack of electrolytes in your body because you're not keeping them around enough. You have so much malabsorption that you have to have some outside source then create that electrical sparks of life. Because electrolytes is the spark of life. However, there has to be a balance, okay? Because it is about bioelectricity, but if you don't have enough of the nutrients and the acids and the pro-hormones and the minerals and the water and all of that, then you can have sparks of life going on, but there's no juice behind it. Just like when you, you, when you, when you, um, when you hit a lighter, when you do a lighter and there's no flame, it's just a spark. That's kind of like what happens at the end of life, but it's only one spark and then nothing because there's no juice behind it. So you're never going to see a continuous flame. Okay. We don't want to have you to where you lose the juice in your lighter <laughs> type of thing. I'm trying to find all these analogies so you guys get it. Okay. Um, so that's why it's, it's when you read industry text, you have to understand the standard deviation scales because they're assuming everybody has issues, but they're only speaking to 60% of the population. But 100% of the population is going to assume that their statistics is taking them into account that people don't know where they lie. They don't know if they're 38%, they don't know if they're 68%. So they just assume they're the 68% and then they stay away from salt or they go on this low sodium diet and low fat and then that's when you see progressive degradation because they're not balancing out their fatty acids, amino acids, pro-hormones pro -hormones and minerals. And then you see the systematic degradation, the aging process. And then people applying all these remedies that then accelerate the aging process. All right. Have a good day, guys. Bye.